in this screencast video lecture we are going to see about how peptidoglycan is biosynthesized there in the cell for a step by step explanation about the peptidoglycan biosynthesis scan the qr code that have been given there on the top right side corner peptidoglycan is a heteropolymer of glycan chains that are cross linked by amino acid here glycan refers to carbon and its derived molecules it can be of a carbon or of its derived molecules the peptidoglycan is a huge molecule it is surrounding the entire cell and appears to be covalently bonded throughout the cell peptidoglycan confers strength to the cell wall and if one need to destroy the peptidoglycan they need to add the enzyme such as a lysozyme or the synthesis of the peptidoglycan can be prevented by using certain antibiotics that is by adding certain antibiotics you can able to prevent the synthesis of the peptidoglycan there in the cell if there is no any peptidoglycan or cell wall cell would swell through the weaker areas and they may even lyse as a result of internal turgor pressure next we look at the chemical composition of the peptidoglycan peptidoglycan is made up of glycan strands of alternative residues that is n acetyl muramic acid as well as n acetyl glucosamine that are linked by a beta 14 glycosidic linkages so if you look at here this is a diagram showing the structure of the peptidoglycan it is made up of a n acetyl muramic acid and n acetyl glucosamine both these monomeric molecules are actually formed from glucose however the n acetyl muramic acid is the one which contains a tetrapeptide molecule that is made up of l alanine d alanine l lysine or meso diamylopimilic acid that can be commonly present there in the gram negatives as well as gram positive groups of bacteria but lysine in the third position can commonly come in the gram positive organisms and the last two amino acids are d alanine and one more molecule of d alanine so these five molecules together constitutes the pentapeptide molecule which have been attached there to the n acetyl muramic acid peculiarly you can able to note here two different configured amino acids could be present there that is both d form that is dextro rotatory form as well as l form of amino acids will be enriched there in the cell wall next we look at how this peptidoglycan synthesis or how the cell wall has been constructed there cell envelope have been constructed there in the cell the following are the four steps that have been involved there in the peptidoglycan synthesis the first one is precursors of the peptidoglycan here precursors refers to n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid that are actually made as a udp derivatives udp stands for uridin diphosphate containing derivatives here the uridin diphosphate is a energy giving molecule for the carrying of the precursors there and the attachment of the precursor there to the cell wall so these precursors have been made from the amino sugars there in the cytosol of the cytoplasm then the second step the amino sugars are then transferred to the lipid carrier the lipid carrier here refers to anti caprenoyl phosphate this help in transferring the amino sugars that is the precursors of the peptidoglycan there into the membrane which further carries the precursors across the membrane that is across the cell membrane and finally the peptidoglycan are getting polymerized outside the surface of the membrane that is on the outside to cytoplasmic membrane the peptidoglycan is polymerized and on the final step a transpeptidation reaction helps in cross linking the peptidoglycan to form into a final cell wall molecule through simple steps first we try to understand how the peptidoglycan monomers that is n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid are synthesized there in the cell so it starts with the fructose 6 phosphate which is actually formed through the course of the glycolysis operation so in the presence of fructose 6 phosphate and in the presence of glutamine it is converted into glucosamine 6 phosphate which is catalyzed by the enzyme fructose 6 phosphate aminotransferase further 
in the presence of acetyl coenzyme a it can be transformed into n acetyl glucosamine with the help of the catalyst glucosamine phosphate transacetylase in the next step it has been converted into n acetyl glucosamine 6 phosphate further into n acetyl glucosamine 1 phosphate then with the addition of the energy molecule that is uridine triphosphate it is finally converted into udp n acetyl glucosamine from this the subsequent steps are involved there in the formation of the n acetyl muramic acid that is n acetyl glucosamine serve as a substrate for the formation of n acetyl muramic acid so from here it starts again with the presence of phosphoenol pyruvate n acetyl glucosamine is converted into udp n acetyl glucosamine 3 enolyl pyruvyl ether in the next step with the help of the reducing equivalent in the form of nadph it is converted into udp n acetyl muramic acid so that is the another monomeric molecule that is involved there in the peptidoglycan synthesis hope you already remember the n acetyl muramic acid is the one to which a pentapeptide molecule is attached so that is the one that have been shown in the final step in the diagram that is l alanine d glutamate the third position may be of an lysine if it is of a gram positive bacteria or diamylopimilic acid can be present there if it is of a gram positive or gram negative and subsequently two molecules of d alanine have been present there so this one is technically referred as a udp muramyl pentapeptide molecule so as a first step the precursors for peptidoglycan synthesis have been formed that is n acetyl muramic acid and n acetyl glucosamine in the second step the n acetyl muramic acid pentapeptide is transferred to the phospholipid carrier that is anticamprenyl phosphate on the cytoplasmic side of the cell membrane at the same time an n acetyl glucosamine is transferred to a already present n acetyl muramic acid pentapeptide containing indicapranoyl phosphate molecule that is the phospholipid carrier so these results in the formation of a disaccharide containing lipid carrier molecule which would be further transferred there to the cell membrane thus in the next step the disaccharide pentapeptide containing n acetyl muramic acid and the n acetyl glucosamine containing lipid precursor that is anticaprenyl phosphate will be moving there to the external surface or external face of the cell membrane that is outside to the cell membrane thus both the molecules are getting polymerized there in the outer surface of the cell membrane and the finally a transpeptidation reaction will be carried out by a transglycosylase enzyme that involves in transferring the incoming disaccharide to a growing glycan chain of peptidoglycan thereby a final peptidoglycan structure will be formed there in the cell next we look at the points related to the capsule biosynthesis there in the cell capsule size generally varies from 10 to 100 kilo dalton they are very important for cell survival there in the natural habitat however mutant cells without capsule can able to easily survive there in the laboratory here the classical example is the streptococcus pneumonia cells that are used for the transformation experiment are varying in the presence and absence of the capsules alone it is of two types that is capsules and slime which differs on the thickness on the cell the capsular structures could prevent desiccation if it is of a pathogen that's a case of the streptococcus pneumoniae the capsule helps in protecting them from the host immune system responses mainly by preventing the phagocytosis process that may be induced by the host immune system they also serve as a source for effective attachment of the bacteria to the surfaces most of the extracellular polysaccharides are synthesized from the intracellular nucleoside diphosphate and sugar precursors so after their synthesis they need to be 
transported through the cell membrane to the outside of the cell. Some special cases that occurs there in the gram negative bacteria and extracellular polysaccharide that have been synthesized internally to the cell is transported through three different membranes that includes cell membrane, periplasm and outer membrane. The steps related to the biosynthesis of polysaccharide and its translocation using the anticaprenal diphosphate are well studied in certain organisms such as Klebsiella aerogens and the xanthan synthesis which is also again a polysaccharide kind of thing, capsular material that is synthesized by xanthomonas campus trees have been studied in detail. Say this Klebsiella aerogens capsular material is made up of heteropolysaccharide that is it containing repeating tetrasaccharides that are in turn made up of galactose, mannose, glucuronic acid and galactose. The glucuronic acid here is attached to the branch at each mannose residues. After they are synthesized there in the cytoplasm, they all need to be transported. For this, some special kind of ABC transporter mechanisms are involved, especially the KPS gene cluster. The codes for ABC transporters are involved in the group 2 capsular polysaccharides translocation there in the cell system.